Hello, good afternoon, and salam from Malaysia. I'm Richard J. Bunto. You're watching updates at noon at this hour on TV2. Cabinet minor reshuffle. Two deputy prime ministers, nine new ministers and deputies, 11 deputy ministers reassigned, five members drop from list. Reopening of Malaysia Brunei Maritime Border. CVTL commences between Moira and Labuan Ferry Ports. Two deputy prime ministers for Sri Lankan interim unity government. Expansion of members to the European Union boosts the strained relations between the former Western and Eastern blocs in the midst of war between Russia and Ukraine. Russian, Russian ruble suffers high inflation percentage caused by undetermined rate of economic sanctions. In sport, friendly tournament between foot different football teams foster the spirit of good sportsmanship. Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob today made a minor shuffle as an early preparation for the upcoming 15 general elections, which will be held anytime soon. Among the ministers that will be reshuffled to different positions are namely Datu Sri Hishamuddin Hussein, who shifted from the Defence to the Rural Development Ministry, replacing Datu Sri Mazib Khalid, who was appointed as well as promoted simultaneously to the position that was vacated by him. Hence, what two ministers were to appointed simultaneously in the person of Senator Datu Dr. Awang Adi Hussein for the Higher Education Portfolio, replacing Datu Dr. Noraini Ahmad Amno, who is also Amno Woman Chief, a former Cabinet Deputy Minister and who is appointed as a senator as well as former fellow chairman Datu Sri Idris who is appointed as tourism minister replacing Datu Sri Nancy Shukri who was dropped from the list. All the other ministers were retained as is with the exception of two re returning members. For the deputy ministers, among the ministers that were reassigned were former deputy minister Datu Arthur Kuruk who is now deputy sport, youth and sports minister replacing senator Datu Sri Tri Lian Kerr who was not reappointed. Both the deputies for the internal affairs and defence ministries respectively were former day one rocket deputy speaker come first deputy internal affairs minister Datu Dr Ismail Said and former cooperatives deputy minister come former second deputy education minister Datu Muslimin Yahaya are now currently holding the positions of of Deputy Minister of Defence, while the current Deputy Minister of Internal Affairs is the former Deputy Minister of Defence, Dr. Sri Iqmal Hisham Abdul Aziz, and also former Deputy Minister of International Trade Industry, Senate Trade and Industry, Senator Dr. Lim Ban Hong, who replaced Dr. Ismail, which moved the Defence Ministry as its core deputy, and also the run-now member of Parliament, Dr. Jonathan Yassin, who was dropped from the list. In the position for the Deputy Minister of Works, former Deputy Foreign Minister Dr. Khamaruddin Jafar assumes his position replacing Dr. Arthur Kurup, who was appointed as Deputy Youth and Sports Minister, in which the posts he vacated were replaced by new faces, namely Senator Dr. Paul Igai and Dr. Daniel Kinsek. The Ministry of Housing and Local Government, on the other hand, received a female Deputy Minister in, minister in the person of Dr. Aziza Muhammad Dun, who replaced Dr. Sri Dr. Ismail Mutalib, who was not re also not reappointed to post. For the Environment Ministry, a deputy, new Deputy Minister was appointed in the person of Senator Dr. Dr. Yi Mo Chai, who was also a former Sabah Deputy Minister replacing Dr. Dr. Mansur Otman, who was transferred to the Communications and Multimedia Ministry as its Deputy Minister. Whilst for the Minister of International Trade and Industry, Dr. Mastura Yazid, former Deputy Minister of Special Functions, was appointed as its new deputy and her vacant post position was filled by former Deputy Minister of Economic Affairs, Dr. Edin Shazdi Shit, after serving two stints as a Deputy Cabinet Minister for the two different portfolios, namely as Deputy Minister of Legal Affairs and also Deputy Minister of Works in the administration of Emeritus Prime Minister Kam Karan. Chairman of the National Recovery Council, Tan Sri Moyidin Yassin, from 2020 to 2021, as well as in the pre regional cabinet from 2021 up to this year. On the other hand, the Minister of Entrepreneur and Cooperatives obtained two deputy ministers namely Jirantut MP Datu Nazlan Idris of Amno and Betong MP Datu Robert Lawson of GPS, replacing Datu Muslimin Yahaya, who was transferred to the Defence Ministry as its second deputy minister. For the Federal Territories Ministry, a new Deputy Minister was appointed in person of Senator Dr. Dr. Dominic Lau, who is also Parti Gerakan Rakyat Malaysia President, in which he replaced Dr. Sri Jalaluddin Alias, who was transferred to the Ministry of Rural Development as its first Deputy Minister, serving alongside Dr. Hasbi Habibola, the Limbang Member of Parliament. Finally, in the Transport Ministry, the former Deputy Minister of Communications and Multimedia, Dr. Zahidi Zainul Abidin, was its appointed its first Deputy Minister, serving alongside Dr. Henry Sum Agong, which was its previously its sole Deputy Minister. 
Among the five cabinet ministers that were dropped were two full ministers, namely Amno Woman Chief, Dr. Dr. Naraini Ahmad of the Higher Education Ministry, and also Dr. Sri Nancy Shukri, who previously served as the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture. While the deputy, three deputy ministers that were not listed were not listed were the former Deputy Minister of Housing and Local Government, Dr. Sri Dr. Ismail Abdul Mutalib. Former Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports, Senator Dr. Sri T. Lian Kerr, and former First Deputy Minister of Rural Development, Dr. Sri Abdul Rahman Muhammad. Simultaneously, in line with the announcement, two ministers are now appointed as core Deputy Prime Ministers, namely the Minister of Internal Affairs, Dr. Sri Hamza Zainuddin, as well as the Minister of Finance, Senator Dr. Sri Tunku Zafrul Tunku Abdul Aziz. The swearing in of the newly reshuffled cabinet members is scheduled to take place within a week on July 6, but the appointments are effective today. After the break, the Russian ruble suffers high inflation percentage caused by undetermined rate of economic sanctions. Potential expansion of the European Union is a measure of boosting strained relations between the former Western as well as Eastern blocs in the 2020s decade. Welcome back. Now, business news. The Russian ruble suffers high ruble suffers high inflation percentages caused by the ongoing but undetermined rate of economic sanctions owing to the Russia-Ukraine war. The war, now only escalating in certain areas of Ukraine, has caused more and more countries to block their oil and gas trade with Russia, owing to strained relations between the two nations that is still occurring without any feasible solutions for peace. Now, world news. As a result of the ongoing tensions between Russia as well as Ukraine, a potential enlargement of the European Union is most likely to take place in boosting the strained relations between the former Western as well as Eastern blocs. Among the potential member states of the European Union as this intergovernmental organization continues to expand post-Brexit are namely Albania, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Georgia, Kosovo, Montenegro, Moldova, Norway, North Macedonia, Serbia and Turkey as these countries were not members of this bloc. But but due to the ge geographic location in the continent of Europe, these nations have, have decided to become new upcoming members after the exit of the United Kingdom since 2019. Now heading to Asia. The Sri Lankan political crisis has met its end after two members of its parliament have been appointed as joint deputy prime ministers in order to end its political deadlock after months and weeks of protests as well as finding solutions to end the nation's bankruptcy wars. After months of weeks and protests that led to the successful tempering of the motion of no confidence against Mahinda Rajapaksa, in which he is now an ouster Prime Minister for the second time running since the 2018 crisis, Sri Lankan Prime Minister Sajid Pramadasa has made a solution to boost his interim unity government by appointing two deputies to assist in day-to-day -day running of the country after the end of the recent political crisis which, crippled, which had crippled the nation for the almost two months since last April. Among the causes of the political crisis to happen is the anguish of distrust of people against the Rajapaksa administration, as well as the over nepotism that has been running by the president itself. President it's himself. The two newly appointed deputy prime ministers in Pramadasa's government are namely a veteran lawmaker named Nirmal Sipala de Silva, who has served more than five terms as a parliamentarian, as well as former president from 2015 to 2020, Maitripala Srisena, who is also currently a nationalist MP. Appointments of these two lawmakers were in line with the interim unity's government's expansion to, expansion to curb the nation's bankruptcy problems as well as the recovery of all aspects in transition from the pandemic to the endemic stages of the COVID-19 outbreak in Sri Lanka. Coming up, the opening of BTL between Malaysia and Brunei for sea routes has been in good progress so far. Negotiations, negotiations underway within weeks to boost maritime trade and tourism routes. Back to other news. Finally, after weeks and months of waiting, a new VTL scheme has been opened between Malaysia and Brunei. Nego negotiations have been made between the relevant authorities of both nations as well as the ferry operators to resume cross-border vehicle ferry routes from Labuan to Muara back for vice versa in accordance with the border reopening that has been effect since, in effect since April 1. The governments of Malaysia and Brunei Darussalam has agreed to open an executive to travel in scheme for maritime transportation after almost two years of dormancy due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which restricted cross-border travel between both neighbours via sea traffic to the points of Muara as well as Nabuan. This was expressed by Transportation Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong on his recent phone call with his Brunei counterpart Dr. Abdul Mutalib Yusuf, recently pursued to the success of the previous VTL schemes that were conducted on land as well as on air transportation via border ports in the towns of Lawas, Mibi and Limbang, as well as the main airports of Kuala Lumpur, Kota Kinabalu, Kuching, and not long from now, Sandakan.
As of now, negotiations have been undone positively between both sides and we will be and we will be conducting an informal visit to His Majesty Sultan Hasnal Bolkia alongside with Prime Minister Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob in the nearest period of time for the successful execution of prayer. On the sports front now, a friendly football match was organized successfully to foster good relations between different teams as a mark of positive swordsmanship. A friendly, was, a friendly football match was held at Sandakan Sports Complex 3L Forest Stadium in my file Pier, was held recently as a measure of fostering goodwill and positive swordsmanship. Sabah Youth Sports Minister Dr. Elwan Angin said this while being met by reporters at a set location whilst officiating the closing of the finals of the friendly football tournament. This sports story of the day concludes today at today's edition of updates and live on TV2, simulcast on Red RTM, TVOK and RTM World Channels. Now, a recap of the headlines. Cabinet minor reshuffle, two deputy prime ministers, nine new ministers and deputies, eleven deputies reassigned, five members dropped from list. Reopening of Malaysia Brunei Maritime Border, CBTL commences between Muara and Labuan. Two deputy prime ministers appointed for Sri Lankan interim unity government. Expansion of members to the European Union boosts trade relations. High inflation rate percentage causes Russian rubble uh, causes Russian rubble to suffer. Friendly tournament between different football teams fostered spirit of good sportsmanship. So we will meet again tomorrow at the same time and place. Follow the Brita RTM page across all social media platforms. Do tune in to regional news on the hour at 3 p.m., 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. here on TV2. Also, don't forget to watch news at, news at 10 on Brita RTM via my view channel 123. I'm Richard J. Buntal signing off and Salam Kulaga Malaysia. Have a pleasant afternoon.